the summit was really put together with the idea that we wanted to be able to provide a space for folks that are engaged in that local food system to connect, to collaborate with others, and to get engaged um, so that we can help build the capacity for our local food system in Kansas. The first ever Kansas Local Food Summit, an event highlighting the state's challenges in accessing nutritious foods, is being held August 27th and 28th at the Kansas Leadership Center and Kansas Health Foundation in downtown Wichita. On today's Sound Living, efforts to help Kansas communities fill gaps in local food systems. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. K-State Research and Extension Local Food System Program Coordinator Amanda Lindahl says the Kansas Local Food Summit will allow people from communities across the state to learn what is working in other Kansas communities. Amanda, let's start off first by just talking about the Kansas Local Food Summit that's coming up August 27th and 28th in Wichita. What's kind of the guiding force behind this and what can people expect? Yeah, so we're very excited to host our first Local Food Summit here in Kansas coming up in August. And, you know, I think that the guiding force behind this was to provide an opportunity to bring people together across Kansas with that focus on local food. We have a lot of conferences and opportunities for producers and folks involved in the agriculture system across Kansas, but there hasn't really been one specific to local food systems. So that entire system from producers thinking all the way through how our food is processed and distributed and gets to the consumer right here in Kansas. So when we think about our local foods, we know that there are a lot of unique opportunities to engage communities in all parts of that system within their local community and more on a a regional basis. So the summit was really put together with the idea that we wanted to be able to provide a space for folks that are engaged in that local food system to connect, to collaborate with others, and to get engaged um, so that we can help build the capacity for our local food system in Kansas. You know, we are eager to see folks that might be involved in the local food system from advocates, so people that might be working on a local food and farm council, um, a lot of that grassroots organizing, folks working on policy in order to build kind of the momentum for that local food system, to, of course, producers, people growing the food, people that are processing it, making it into value-added products across the state, providing a space for them to connect with others, folks that are involved in food rescue or food reuse capacities, how we can bring them together to see how they are part of our food system as well. And, you know, really anybody that looks at, sees, or consumes local food, you know, is invited to this summit. And we're hopeful that it'll be a space for people to feel energized and engaged and ready to take part in building in their own communities a stronger local food system. And you're looking at doing that through some of the breakout sessions? Yeah. So we have a number of breakout sessions planned that will be spaces for folks to learn from other experts in the field across Kansas. So we have a number of Kansas speakers that will be leading some of those breakout sessions. In addition, we have some really cool, we're calling them learning circles planned for our summit, which will be a little bit more of a concept for folks engaged in those learning circles to learn from each other. So not necessarily listening to one specific speaker that has all the answers, but how can they guide a conversation with all the people in the room to share what they know? Because we know that we are all individual, you know, experts in some manner, and we have things to learn from each other. So that is the hope around those learning circles. Of course, this summit wouldn't be a conference or a summit without a few keynote speakers as well. So we do have two really awesome keynote speakers we're looking forward to learning from, one being John Whitler, who's the executive director of Ogallala Commons, which is a really cool nonprofit organization that serves several states that reside over the Ogallala Aquifer area. So they do some really great work down in Southwest Kansas in addition to other states. And he's going to be talking about leveraging value chain coordination to build a better food system. So working on, of course, all of the players within the value chain. So 
you know, how we get our food from the producers to the consumers and how we can really build value within that system there. So talking kind of about food hubs, um, they have a unique model of local food hubs within rural areas specifically that they reach. And so he'll be talking about that a little bit. We have a second keynote speaker, Dr. Mary Hendrickson, who works with the Interdisciplinary Center for Food Security at um, the University of Missouri. And so she's going to be talking about creating food secure, resilient communities. All of the details are on our website, kansaslocalfoods.org. And so you can really see the different opportunities and there's something there for everyone, we hope. So all of that info there, we really would encourage folks to take a look at that and, and get registered soon. I also wanted to talk about just the local food systems in general because there's a grant that's been underway for almost a couple of years now, and that is starting to make some real progress. One of the things you did was starting with some roundtables. Yes. So when we got started, our regional food systems partnership grant that's funding our Kansas Local Foods program right now, we got started with a number of community roundtables across the state last fall, which was an opportunity to gather with people all across the state. We'd really tried to meet with folks in all areas in order to ask some really important questions and to get feedback from Kansans on what they have seen as being challenges within their local food system. And then we also were able to ask questions about what do you envision for your future? So what have we experienced as challenges and what could we see in the future? And hopefully we can be a part of moving towards that future, you know, bridging some of those gaps and some of those needs and finding a way towards creating that future that Kansans really want. And so it was a really great opportunity to gain a lot of data and information. This is not the first time that Kansans have been asked about their local food system and what the gaps or barriers they experience are. But the last time, you know, from our knowledge that specific work was done towards identifying priority areas was back in 2015 and 2016. The Kansas State Legislature had a special task force specific for local foods, and they created this great guide and recommendations. And then when that task force was no longer, that guide kind of unfortunately sat on a shelf. And so when our work started in 2023, trying to assess where we could go, what might be our priorities. We knew we needed to ask those questions again. So that's what started a lot of our work in Kansas Local Foods was asking Kansans where they're at, where do they want to go, and how we can better serve them from K-State in our specific role of being connected to every county across the state through extension. We know that we have a really pivotal role in connecting with all those communities and helping move our communities forward. So that's where we started was with the roundtables. And it was, you know, many, many sheets of paper with a lot of ideas written down that got transposed into a giant Excel chart. And, you know, we were able to take a look at all that data and organize it. And we came out with some really cool ideas that Kansans have and some pretty concrete goals that Kansans want to see in their food system. Would I be correct in assuming that some of the issues that are faced in rural communities are also being seen in some urban areas too? Yeah, absolutely. When we think about access to food, it's an issue across the state. And having the ability to access healthy, fresh, and local foods is an issue, you know, regardless if you're in a rural area or an urban area. And of course, they just might look differently. So You know, being able to access a grocery store within a rural area is a big challenge for a lot of folks. And we see the same issues in urban areas. Perhaps it's, you know, just not having transportation to that space. And so there's a number of things that go into those issues of being able to access healthy food. I was looking at the website for Kansas Local Foods, and there is a number of resources on there, a number of things that are being done. Ways to get involved is probably one of the most important aspects of this program. Absolutely. So 
We have a lot of different resources when we put together our Kansas Local Foods website. You know, our goal was trying to see what are we currently missing as far as resources for people that are growing, producing, processing, distributing food locally, and trying to provide a lot of those resources for our communities to access. And so you'll notice that we have a lot of links on our website to a lot of different resources that come from other states. We understand that, of course, Kansas is unique and has specific rules and regulations, but a lot of kind of the how-to in perhaps, you know, growing local food or raising your own beef and selling and marketing it locally. You know, a lot of those sort of marketing type strategies and production strategies are going to be similar regardless of where you're at. So you'll notice we have a lot of links to other state institutions and other experts in the field in order to provide some of those resources that we weren't necessarily able to currently find within our K-State system. But, you know, that's the goal is to be a connector and to help communicate where folks can find access to those resources. Another thing that we've been working on recently is adding better information about our Heartland Regional Food Business Center, which is another initiative that KSA Research and Extension is collaborating with other states within the Heartland area. So it's several states that are working together to provide specific business support to food and farm businesses. And so we've been just this week talking about how we can better link to a lot of the technical assistance support that the Food Business Center has and how we can make sure that when Kansans visit our website, that they are able to quickly see if they have a specific question about processing their tomatoes into salsa in order to sell in their local market. They can call up a technical service provider that's available through the Harlan Regional Food Business Center and be able to get help right away. Our work with the Kansas Local Foods Program is really to be that connector and collaborator. And we've been able to partner with a number of different institutions, but other programs within K-State Research and Extension in order to provide the best support for Kansans that are growing food and wanting to take part in that local food retail space. I wanted to also touch briefly on the Kansas Fellows Project because that's another opportunity for people to connect locally. Yeah, so we have the Kansas Local Food Fellows Program that we launched last year in order to help build capacity for our partners across the state. A lot of the local food initiatives across the state are really being run by grassroots initiatives, you know, a lot of volunteers associated with food and farm councils working to build capacity. And so the fellows program was launched in order to provide a paid person to work on a specific local food system project. So we were able to accept 16 different projects in 2024 across the state. Of course, we partnered with community organizations, some specific farm businesses, some food councils in counties. A few of them have been with actual case study research and extension local unit offices in order to work on, like I said, that site-specific project. And we have seen a lot of really cool, unique projects that have happened so far this year. And we are really looking forward to another year. Next year in 2025, we'll have additional funding. The fellows projects are set up to be 320-hour fellow opportunities. And so they are a paid position for that 320 hours. Most of them have been part-time projects. So they've hired somebody to work, you know, 20 or 30 hours a week for a number of weeks. But a few of them have been full-time projects. We're just wrapping up our K-State student fellows that have been working full-time this summer, June and July. And, you know, we just were able to hear some really amazing work and success stories that they were able to share. You know, it's a competitive process, so they'll be open August 1st through September 30th for community partners to apply to host a fellow in 2025. That's K-State Research and Extension Local Food System Program Coordinator Amanda Lindahl with information on the Kansas Local Food Summit being held August 27th and 28th in Wichita. 
To learn more, visit ksre.k-state.edu slash Kansas Local Foods. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.